That is cool. When the bridge was destroyed in 1927, temporary timbers were put up. All the train companies that used to own this bridge. All right, let's go check it out. It's springtime. I've never been to this place when there's leaves on the trees. I've also never been here when there's not really any wind. Of course it's high up, there's always going to be some wind. But not too bad today. Just take a look at this trail. I bet a lot of that's erosion from water, but it started as a trail from people going swimming under this bridge. The railings are all knocked off. People push them because they're not mortared together. None of this bridge is put together with mortar. Super high. The top of the arch is only three feet thick, and that's what makes it so amazing. If you look at it, it looks like five or six feet, but that's soil. Soil doesn't count as being structural. Although it does add weight and keep the blocks all put together. Look down there how high that water gets. See all the debris way up there. It's amazing the Beaver Lodge can survive that kind of flood. We'll show it on the way back. They must have it anchored down with all kinds of rocks. Now we're going to go down the little trail that people have built right here. And you see that little trickle down there going underneath the active tracks? We'll go check that out too. We've been inside that culvert over the winter. This is the trail that people made. There's even a rope down there to help you. They're both non-official trails. This one here goes over to CSX's tracks. It's a great view over here. The train company really doesn't care as long as you don't walk on their tracks. There's a ton of room off to the side as there's an actual road that follows it. Every time I've been stopped by the train company, they've never given me trouble. They just ask what I'm doing and you just save photographing. Unless they're not going to take that answer if you're in the middle of a city that's known for causing trouble putting things like refrigerators on the track like they do at the West Springfield crossings. How amazing is that? No mortar. And you saw the picture there of the giant flood. The gap was so big it looks like it took the land out way down there and they had to rebuild all that. Definitely a bridge that will last forever as long as they maintain it. This one doesn't have any visual damage. The next arch has all kinds of erosion around the corner and if they don't fix it, it's eventually going to collapse like the third one did. Made it down. That's the old beaver lodge there. Take a look at all this brand new debris down here from the winter. A bunch of knotweed that the river will rip out of the ground during flood season and spread it around further downstream. Even a railroad tie got washed in here from somewhere. Look how nice and clean this little brook is. This culvert was built in 1927. I believe that's what it said on the other side.
Now we're just gonna climb up to the tracks and we'll come back on that other trail. Look at that cave. Here we are at the active tracks. They must have be trimming this so their passenger trains can see it. Because the passenger trains here go really slow with all these corners. And they must be keeping it trimmed so they can see. But it's a great view if you follow the trail up here. And there's the trail coming back. Let's see what's up this trail. Is this some good view people have for watching the active trains? Where's this gonna bring us? Yeah, this is definitely a good place to watch trains from overhead. See right here is part of an old telegraph pole. They definitely chainsawed it down for some reason. That's not a break. See it right there? Definitely chainsawed. And there it is laying on its side. Of course the insulators are all taken because those are worth money now. All right, that high trail loops around here and back. Look at the size of this rock that fell. This railway is completely blocked. You know, there's actually little signs up here, especially further down, asking you to stay off CSX property. But I was just looking at a property map online that shows where all the boundaries are. CSX technically still owns these bridges, so that sign is complete BS. It should say, stay off the active rail line, not stay off the property, because that means two totally different things. Big fire pit. A lot of people must have fires here in the summer while they're swimming. On the way back. This place is beautiful in the winter time when you got icicles coming down those cliff walls. The drainage ditch here on the left is still functional, but the one on the right's completely filled in, so now you got the water actual on the trail, because the trail is now the lowest part. There's a culvert pipe here that's not working anymore, because this water is supposed to be in a ditch over here, entering the culvert that's right behind that tree. By the looks of it, culvert is still open, but the drainage ditch is down. Because it's a trail now, you don't really need the drainage ditch. It's all fine the way it is now. It's going down and it's draining at the bridge. But someone could easily take an excavator from the trail here going back over to the park. Good to see they cut up all the trees. There was a blow down here when we came by in the winter. CSX still drives their trucks up here occasionally. I have no idea why. You saw there's a perfectly good road along the tracks. Maybe they're responsible for keeping this clear, but I doubt it. Here we are at the next arch, the one that has all the foundation damage underneath it. This one will probably be gone soon. When I say soon, maybe 50 years if it's not addressed, because they could definitely save it now. And you can see the tire marks in the middle. That's from the, the railway's vehicles. They use this as a shortcut. It doesn't go back to the parking lot anymore. That road is not even open or passable anymore. They get on up here at the end of the trail and they go down about three miles and they get off at the one arch the trail doesn't bring you to. You gotta go off the trail for that one. But it's tiny compared to these ones. This one's just as big as the last one. Take a look at that drop. And it's super windy out here again. Look at that, the trees at the top of the mountain don't even have leaves yet. Just a little bit of elevation really changes it. I want to go to the end of this trail completely. And you cross the river and there's a couple abandoned vehicles. Someone drove up the train tracks years ago and dumped. And that's the trail that just goes underneath the bridge. 
those must be pieces of railing that were loose because they knew people would push them off like they did at the other bridge. That's the bridge that still exists with trains going over it. You see this wall here? This one is the one that collapsed. Keep back away from wall edge. And exactly what I was talking about right there. Do not venture onto CSX transportation property. As far as I can tell, this trail is their property. So that makes absolutely no sense. It should say to stay off the active rail line. So this is what most people probably assume is the boundary, but it all is the boundary. This is the wall they were showing in that picture. This bridge collapsed years ago. That's the wall it was saying, stay away from the edge. Yeah, we're technically on the same property as the trail. I'm just gonna follow this. Because that river's running actually higher today. There's no way to get across it without getting wet. There's the other side of the wall. See, this is where the bridge collapsed from. That looks pretty cool. We're gonna walk up to that wall when we get back down to the riverbed. And I'm not worried about walking along the tracks here. I've had the CSX employees talk to me here before and they said they don't care if I'm here as long as I stay off the tracks because I told them I was filming trains. That was my original video of the place like two years ago now, maybe even three years back. That's a track oiler, which is pretty cool. Every time the train runs over that button right there with the wheel, it dispenses grease and it tracks it all the way down around these corners and it makes the rails last longer, reduces friction. Now this track doesn't have it because it's a siding, it doesn't get used as much, so they don't really care about it. That is Japanese knotweed, an invasive plant. Up here at the top of the hill where there's barely any water, it definitely thrives in swamps, but eventually it will spread throughout the forest here. Because the forest is shaded, it's going to grow very scraggly, like you see here. There's little pieces of it all around. But eventually, when some of the mature trees start falling down, it will take over in the sunny areas. And it's so thick, and it takes all the water, it'll prevent any seedlings from growing. So eventually this whole forest will be dead to the point it's only that stuff. Now here we are, like the little junkyard. I see some folding chairs, all kinds of pieces of random metal. See a wheelbarrow down there. There's some pieces of a car. car door, but there's a pickup truck and car down here, fully intact, that somebody must have pushed off the hill that they drove up to the track. All right, we got the first car here, which is made by Ford. That's all I know about it. That's the bridge in the background. Look at that. Or it says Ford right here. Big old engine in that. It's still got carburetors. It's an old car. Yeah, they definitely scrapped a whole bunch of things off it. down here well I guess it's not intact my memory was wrong there's an old pickup truck just the cab and right here somebody's been throwing this stuff around because that was not here a couple years ago that's a tiny deep fryer 
that was way somewhere else. Oh yeah, someone was definitely here. That graffiti wasn't here a few years ago. Definitely more vandalism to this than there was last time. This seat was still anchored in there because I remember sitting inside of it as we looked around inside. Oh yeah, only 35 miles on the odometer. I remember pointing that out. What is that? Is that the gas tank inside here? That's weird. As I see the fuel line coming out. Yeah, that looks like a gas tank to me. Definitely a gas tank. I've never seen that before. Behind the seat like that. Usually it's under the bed on the older ones. Definitely a work truck. Look at that heavy gauge screen. So something in the bed doesn't smash through if you slam the brakes on. That looks more like bird shot. You see the entire blast made a hole. But individually they would never have made holes. Great place for swimming. Really deep pool here. And look at the deterioration on that bridge. I can see water dripping in there. Eventually this river is going to get high. And one year this entire wall is just going to collapse where that sign is up there. But you see that hole in the actual concrete? That looks like a drain that's supposed to be there so pressure behind the wall can get out. And there's even deterioration on the new arch. But it's nice, at least they built the new bridge as an arch, so it looks like it belongs here. Really nice beach here. Look at the sand. Got a giant hole. So this is the inside of the bridge. Like the middle eroded. It's built differently than the others, definitely. Okay, we're back at the Beaver Lodge. It's just out of sight of the first bridge. It amazes me that it survived the winter because look at the river bank next to it. The water was all the way up to here and possibly further in the woods, but this is about its maximum flood. When it flooded, that whole thing would have been underwater. How did it stay anchored? They must have a ton of rocks keeping that thing down. And it's intertwined. They weave the sticks together, so it's all basically one piece. But it's amazing in water that deep and probably moving really fast that it didn't just float away. They are definitely great engineers. Hope this video was interesting. Thanks for watching.